Hello, this is Lane Sebastian with my Microsoft Office training videos. Today we're going to be doing PowerPoint, and there are a few uh, particular tabs we'll be looking at uh, that includes File, and Review, and View. And uh, we're going to be following along with uh, the File, Review, and View Gmetrics activity. Uh, feel free to follow along. Um, I'm actually going to skip over my number one, which is about saving options, because that's really simple. Um, and I'm going to start on my number two right here. Um, change the PowerPoint autocorrect options to not show the autocorrect options buttons. Okay, So options, anything that's really weird, nitty gritty stuff, um, you go to options. And to do that, you go to the backstage view, which is when you click file, you go to options. And autocorrect options, anything autocorrect, um, whenever you're doing autocorrect, your proof, it, it, you could say Excel is proofreading for you, so it's going to be under proofing. And all the autocorrect stuff is this first category, and you really just have to open up the dialog box, because there's no other options here. And the very first option at the tippy top of this first tab, autocorrect options buttons, toggle that off and you're good to go. Now just remember you have, um, there are other tabs available to you if you want to change things like, um, you know, how, how does Excel, I'm sorry, <laughs> how does PowerPoint treat fractions, um, smart quotes, hyphens to dashes, smiley faces, um, those are all in this auto format tab and then you have um, the autocorrect tab where you can say well if I accidentally type about a it's going to change it to about a um, and then other things like caps lock all under autocorrect and if you have particular exceptions that you would like to add you pop open the, the second dialog box and then here you go you add some more um, exceptions to the rules okay so once you're done you just have to hit OK and um, once we've done that, we're back under options. Remember, uh, other options include things like uh, we have a save category for where do we save, where do we auto save, how often, um, are we including fonts when we save, um, and then other categories, typography, uh, I don't think everyone has that, so don't worry about it. Uh, language, language, uh, do we want to be checking this so it's supposed to be in English or Chinese or another language? Um, advanced is going to have things, uh, really, really nitty gritty things, um, like how many undos can I do? Um, you know, c do I want to show shortcut keys when I hover over a particular function in the ribbon? Um, all sorts of really weird stuff is in this advanced. So if you're looking for something really particular, that's where you go. Um, and then general is like what color is the display back here? It's currently silver. And what's your username? And mine is Melaine because that's my name. All right. Um, so once you've done that, you're done with this question. Good job. Let's head on to number three. All right. Now we are on to number three. Um, and that is going to be save slide 2 in the presentation as a JPEG image named slide2.jpg. All right, normally um, when we save things, you know we go to the backstage view and we save from there. However, because of the specifications of this problem, uh, we have to do one step first, and that's going to be go to slide 2, because that's actually the only one that we want to save. Uh, once you are on slide two, then go to the backstage view, meaning click on file, um, and you're going to hit save as. Okay, and um, remember you can choose where uh, where your file goes. If you're not doing Gmetrics, you know you save it wherever you want on your C drive or desktop, whatever it is. Um, but for Gmetrics, make sure you're in your Gmetrics templates folder. Um, we want to name it slide 02, and we don't actually have to type the .jpg. It'll take care of that for us um, if we select the right file format. Okay, um, so the last thing is save as type, and you have all sorts of types available to you. You can do your PDF. You can do um, an older version of PowerPoint. You could save it as an outline. Um, as a GIF. Okay, so all sorts of things available to you, um, and you are just going to pick JPEG um, 
Okay, and then before you do that, it, or before you finish up, if you need to add any tags, like, you know, oh, this is about Earth Day, so Earth Day tag, or a title, you know, whatever whatever you need to do, go ahead and uh, change those options before you finish up, and hit save. And it's going to ask you something. Do you want to export every slide or only the current? Well, we just want slide two, so there you go. Uh, and that is it for saving as a JPEG. Let's move on down to number five. Okay. And number five is going to be really familiar to you if you've... Um, you know, if you've done Word, if you've done Excel, and that's mark the presentation as final. So you go to the backstage view, protect presentation, mark as final. Um, remember the other options we have back here. We can add a digital signature from here, restrict access, or a password. Um, but just click on the f mark as final, click OK, click OK, and that's it. This has been marked as final to discourage editing. Voila, you're all finished. Okay, um, it's on to number seven. Okay, and that's the number right there if you're following along. Uh, let's go. Okay, um, start the slideshow from the beginning. On slide five, use the highlighter with red ink and underline the first question save all annotations. Okay, that's a kind of a lot of instructions and we have to pretty much do it all in one step. Because um, once we start the slideshow, it's gonna take up the whole screen and we're not gonna be able to see what's going on. So we're gonna have to memorize this part. On slide five, use the highlighter, red ink, underline the first question and save all annotations. Okay, I think we got this. Um, so to start the slideshow, you're gonna go to slideshow. And this is where you do all the stuff that has to do with actually playing your slideshow. There are two options, beginning and current slide, if you're ready to you know, get started. And we want to click from the beginning. right? Um, and then once you have it open, you have many options to proceed through the slideshow. Um, so you can click to proceed. Uh, and by proceed, I mean that, that just means go on to the next slide, You know, nothing fancy. Um, you can hit in for next, you can hit the down arrow, you can hit the right arrow, um, you could even right click and you know then click next. Okay, so you have lots of things available to you. I think there might even be more options uh, that I am not remembering right now. Um, so look, and I just hit the space bar, so that's another option. You have no excuses for not knowing how to proceed uh, in a slideshow. All right, so then let's get, this is slide two, three, four, five. Okay, once we're on slide five, now we need to do the highlighter in red, underline the first question, right? Um, so to do that, we can't just start clicking on it because as we know, that'll take us uh, forward to the next slide. So you need to right click. And once you've done that, uh, you have this nice menu available to you. And Let's just look at through look through what the options are here. Um, so we have next and previous. Previous takes you backwards. Uh, you could go to last viewed. So maybe the the one you viewed last is the same as the previous. Maybe not. Maybe you're skipping around because you do have the option to skip around. You can jump, you know, from five to one or five. You know, you can pick any slide to jump to. Um, and then you can, you know, like let's say I clicked on two and then I clicked on last viewed, then I would jump back to five because that was the last one I was on. Um, if you have sections, you can jump to those. If you made a custom show, you can play it. Um, this can allow you to just put on a black screen while you're waiting for something and then you can even uh, mark on it. Okay, and then you can go back. Oop. Okay, and let's just make sure Okay, go to slide five. Um, you can do annotations, which is what we need. You can change how visible or invisible your arrow is. You can get some help. 
um, and help is actually, oh look, here it is. Uh, here are your navigation shortcuts, all the ones we talked about. Um, there's one for like black screen, white screen, start, stop. Um, and then other options here, if you want, if we wanted to do the highlighter, like the question says, we could, um, I don't see, let's see, I don't see highlighter, but you can do, you know, pen, control P, and it switches you to a pen. Um, but we need to do the highlighter, so let's do highlighter. And it's yellow right now, so just right click again, and make it red, and then you underline this. Beautiful. Um, and then I'm just going to hit N to finish out the show and in again. And then it says, do you want to keep? And we do because the question says save all annotations. Um, if you save them, then they show up later. If you didn't save them, they don't. Uh, and that's it. You now know how to navigate through your PowerPoint. Let's go on to number eight. 1630 is the question number. Okay, um, delete the annotation on slide two. Under the heading estimated expenses, and you can just go to slide two and you see it right there. It's this little squiggle and just click it and hit delete. As simple as that, that was nice and easy. Um, and we're on to number 10 or 1643. Okay, on slide two, select the words Fusion Tomo. Okay, so just be very exact about what it says. Don't select more or less than the words Fusion Tomo. Um, and they're in the title. And add a comment that says blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you highlight. Uh, that's the rule, as you might have guessed with, uh, with adding comments. You just have to highlight exactly what you would like to comment on and you're going to then go to review and you say new comment and then you just start typing delete fusion Tomo, blah 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 you get the idea I don't need to type the whole thing just don't include the period on there okay and it's as simple as that um, you type the whole thing and you're done um, now remember you can use previous and next to jump from a uh, you know from comment to comment so we could see if we have another one in the slideshow and we do it's on number four and then here's on, on slide four here's another one on slide five and we can always jump okay and we're back to our first one um, remember delete is right here you can delete all um, or just all in the current slide you can go back and edit comments here and then you already know how to do new and you can turn them off if you don't want to see them as simple as that. Okay, on to number 12. Okay, um, we want to create a handout of the presentation with blank lines below the slides. Uh, save the document that opens as my document in your Gmetrix uh, templates folder. Okay, um, and I needed a little cheat on this one. Um, so for this, we're going to go to File, Save and Send, because we're we're anytime we're creating a different file type, that's going to be you know you go to File and Save and Send usually can can do what you need to do unless you're just doing a save as but in this case we're going to do a save and send um, and you know you look down this list and the very last one is create handouts and you get this big in the big menu area there's there's only one option you just have to create handouts um, so you get the dialog box and it says what does it say here blank lines below so you just look for blank lines below slides you click on that uh, it doesn't say to mess with anything else down here, right? Um, so click OK and wait for it. It might take a second uh, because it, what it's actually doing is creating a Word document. There it is. It's ready. Almost ready. Do, do, do. 
Okay, here it is. Um, you have this nice document. Every page has one slide on it, um, and these these are just uh, images that you know you can you can actually do editing. It's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, so you can go in here and make changes as needed. Um, now we don't have to for this problem, but if you want to you know start typing something here, that that's what you can do from here. Um, but really, the one of the purposes of this you print this out, you hand it out to people who are watching your presentation, and they can take notes on what you're saying um, as you're on that slide. Uh, and then you just do save as, so I don't think I need to show that. Um, you just, you know, save as a Word document in your Geometrics Templates folder, um, and then close it after saving. So you know how to do all that. We don't need to go through all those steps. If you don't know how to do that, go watch my Word uh, documents. Um, videos, sorry. Um, okay, next up is number 13. And we have three questions left. We jump around more and more as we get closer to the end of the uh, assignment. All right, on slide three, okay, whenever you see that, I always just, I just click on that first thing just so I know I'm doing the right thing. Um, change the view of the presentation to notes page, so you go to view, um, you have all these views here. Um, we have, let's see, notes page. It's right here. Um, but before we do that, let's look at all the options we have. Remember, you can turn the ruler on or off, grid lines. You see the grid lines just behind. And then you have guides, and guides are just the midway points vertically and horizontally. Um, you have your different zooms here. You have fit to window. Um, and let me show you what that does because you didn't see any change right now. Um, let's do a zoom. Hmm. Why is it not doing what I want it to do? Let's zoom. Okay, so here's a zoom, but then let's say we... Okay, so it's it's already fitting it to my window no matter what I do. So fit to window, it's not going to change anything. Um, these allow you to see what this would look like in grayscale, so you can just check, you know, how is my document going to look in grayscale. Um, and then you can go back to color view by clicking on that button. Black and white, same thing. Um, you can open up a new window of the same document right here. If you have multiple documents, you can arrange them all. You can do a cascade. Um, if you have a split, or if you have move split, let's watch this. Okay, and really the, the move split button is a little odd because watch what it does. Watch my cursor. Okay, you see how it jumped? I didn't move it. It's down here now. Um, and it just, I don't know, that's, that's literally all it does. It just puts your cursor right at the split and then you can move this around. So that's kind of odd, um, an odd little feature. Um, switch windows, if you have more than one thing open, you can quickly jump between them using that button. So that's kind of useful. Uh, and then macros, pretty much beyond the scope of this class, um, but if you're curious, macros allow you to, uh, you can make a sh some type of shortcut, um, and whenever you use that, then it's going to uh, do some action for you. So maybe every day for work, you know, you need to, um, Every time that you have a new topic for something, you need to add three new slides, um, and then whatever text you already had, you need to make it bold and uh, change, you know, the font to something. And you have to do this all the time, and you get tired of having to do it over and over. Well, you can actually record or write a macro. Um, so you put in these instructions. And then you can say, well, every time I hit Control Shift Three or something like that, um, then I want that that action to happen. And you can make all these things happen. And then every time you hit Control Shift Three, it does it for you. Uh, so they're very useful, but uh, a little on the complicated side. Um, okay, so we never even finished our question here, um, which is just change it to to Notes Page View, and. Master views, master views also a little beyond the scope of this. Um, 
what master views do is they dictate master view says this is what the default slides are going to look like uh, whenever you add a new slide it doesn't just randomly come, generate you know uh, the way that that slide looks it goes off of the master slide of how the master slide looks so if i change this up it'll actually change some of uh, some of my slides that have this type of format, um, so that, that's why it's called the master slide. It's the one that governs how the other ones um, behave. Okay, um, but you know, don't don't worry about that for this test. Just if you were curious, that's what it does. Um, now, these are our normal views. We can get to them from here. We can get to them from here. And you know, here's slide sorter. Here's notes page and reading view. Okay, and for that one, you just have to hit escape to get out. Um, and here's notes page, which has a nice little box for notes under each one. And you scroll and you can jump from page to page. It's, it's really simple. Um, so you just need to go to slide three. One, two, three. Okay, here's slide three. Um, and then to add, it says below slide three, add this note. So you just type this. Take blah, 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 blah. And you can't really see, can you? Okay, so just type that and you're done. On to number 19. Okay. Um, using the image on slide 5, compress all pictures in the presentation to low quality and delete cropped areas. Okay, um, so let's go to slide 5 and when we do that, let's kind of talk about what's going on um, so this is the image and you just click on it and it's a bit confusing when it um, when it says using the image but pretty much this is what that means um, in order to compress all the pictures in the slideshow you have to have your cursor on an image already because you need this special tab to come up. And this is a tab we've seen before in Word and Excel. Um, you just go to format. Uh, it's the picture tools format tab and you got to click compress pictures. So if you don't have that selected, then you can't, you know, it's not there. You can't get to it. That's all they mean by using the image on slide five. So go to slide five, click on this, uh, this young man here and go to format and then compress pictures. And if you're wondering what compressed pictures is, compressed pictures uh, means make them a little less um, high in quality. Um, the computer's gonna find ways to take the file space that that picture takes up and chop some of that file space off because you're trying to make the, uh, the file smaller. You know, you have to fit it on a thumb drive, you have to fit it on a whatever you're emailing it and you don't want it to be at this huge size PowerPoint. Um, and it's also what it'll also do is if you select it is delete cropped areas. So that's remember, um, you know, we've we've cropped images before, I think, in Word and Excel. Um, and if you crop them, then the file or Microsoft, whatever what you're working in, will actually save the remainder of the picture. So if you decide to uncrop, if you want to bring back some of those areas, they're still there, but just invisible. Um, if you do this, it's going to actually chop out those regions so they're completely gone. Um, and it says compress all, so we need to uncheck this first option, but make sure the second one is checked because we do want to apply to um, every one in the PowerPoint, not just this picture. And we do want to delete cropped areas. Um, and then I think you hit OK. Uh oh. OK. Um, and then you save the, pr the new presentation. Now that you've compressed it, you just do File Save As. And you're going to call it compress.pptx. Uh, in your Gmetrics templates folder, and that's it for this question. So it's just a simple save as once once you've done the compressing. And this is our last question. So, um, oh boy. Oh. 
Okay, and it looks like it's <laughs> it's wanting to have some issues, of course, right before we get to the finish line. All right, here it is. Um, encrypt the document with a password, Gmetrix123. Um, all right, so you go to File, you go to Protect, Encrypt. All right, and then I'm just going to be lazy here, but you just type Gmetrix123, and then you do it again, and then you're done. That's it. Um, and then you mark it as final. I hope you know how to do that if you were paying attention on my previous one. That's it. We are all uh, all done here. So now you should know how to use the file, review, uh, and view tabs in PowerPoint. Best of luck on your certification.